G'day folks. Um, other week, went for a drive to the Leeton Tip and found this little fella. Apart from um, putting some fuel in it and pulling the rope and seeing if it would run, I haven't done anything at all to it and um, didn't fire up. So, start off with the simple things like checking for spark and go from there. Uh, okay, it could be very smoky, or perhaps the choke side of things is not working that well. We'll just try another plug before we get too carried away. That plug smells very um, fuely, but there's a lot of deposit there like oil. Spark situation was easy. Where's our oil put us at? It's black, but it's got some in it. All right, take it out the front and um, give it. I went and mowed some lawns with it and um, every so often it was just going into this weird thing where it was grossly over fueling so um, anyhow we'll drain this oil out while the engine's still hot and maybe rip into that carburetor I haven't got a diaphragm for that one so I'll have to order it and we'll come back to it all right so where to next um, I've dumped the oil while it was outside and still nice and hot to solve our overfueling issue, I'm gonna jump on one in a minute and get a diaphragm kit for this carburetor. Need to redo this starter rope. Right, so this has a little bit of like, fraying in it. Look, it doesn't wind in very well, so we'll lube up this starter and find the correct pull knob. While I'm on line, I may try and find the air filter as well. I've got the housing, it was obviously on in the video, but it is quite old and crumbly. I'm not sure where I've put it now. Okay. Rightio, we'll get that one. Closing. I have no affiliation with these guys, but you know, they're pretty reliable. So, yeah. Add to cart. They're not always the cheapest ones anyway. All right, I'll finish ordering them and we'll get back to it when they turn up. Right, yeah, mind the rain, guys. Um, it's coming down pretty hard at the moment. Day in the mail, we've got 
actually proper pull knob. Brand new air filter. And our diaphragm for the carburetor. Start has come away. Alright. Right. That's all we need to take off from there. So we'll um, move across and start pulling this carburetor apart. Righto, so we've got some flat edge screws around the edge of the carburetor on top of the tank here. stuck on there.
Luckily we've got a new screen because that one is between walk about. Uh, so our pickup screen's quite, quite dirty. Mainly shit on the outside of it. No big deal. And just pull out this um, jet here. Might just drop the whole unit in the ultrasonic cleaner just to get the bulk of this crap off. Uh, that's as far as we're going to strip it. I do think these can come out. I've popped them out before. That looks glued in on this one though, so just want to leave it alone. I'm reasonably sure we can get that clear. Uh, maybe not in the ultrasonic cleaner, but I can get some spray to put in it. But let's just get the outside of this done. So round one in the ultrasonic cleaner. Not perfect. A thousand times better. So what I'm gonna do is just sort of help it along a little bit. So all this gunk is actually loose, it's just sitting there. So I'll scrape it away and chuck him back in and we'll see how it turns out. So round two in the um, cleaner, ultrasonic cleaner. Yeah, it's just looking pretty snazzy. It's a little bit wet. The um, choke butterfly still has a bit of carbon on it, but this thing is clean as. So a little bit of carbon on the throttle butterfly. And if you want to be really anal, down in the corners there where I didn't loosen up the dirt, there is a couple of specks still, but very happy. Um, way cleaner than it was. And I've gently blown on the filter screens, be nice, free and clear as well. Okay. While that was in there, wiped the tank down, cleaned out in there. Still sure looking pretty good. I did this off camera. Um, our starter. I had done it while the ultrasonic cleaner was running, so you wouldn't have been able to hear anything. And I didn't really want to sit sit down for 15 minutes and wait. I left the same rope in there, um, cleaned the spring and put the correct pull knob on there. Normally I'd replace the rope. This one's been replaced before. Um, had no signs of fraying or anything. So pretty much, yeah. Took this cover off, sprayed the um, spring out with some solvent, put a light film a very light oil in there just to keep or lubricate it put this dust cover back on don't use a heavy oil in there because it'll attract dust and stuff something like yeah multi-purpose spray wd-40 at a pinch um just to give it something so it's not completely dry and also there's a little roller in behind this cover here which is on a pin which i've lubricated as well so, it should work fine. Let's put the sucker back together. Okay. Mm, gotta clean that. Oh, that one's rubbish. I found our little spring off the diaphragm. Yeah, it fell in the drawer. And diaphragm, ah, uh, fuel pump diaphragm spring. Screws, which I didn't clean, bit of hindsight, should have um, put those in to get cleaned as well, but I didn't, anyway, 
Start by this jet. The tip of the jet's clean, so it just needs to go in. So just as a sort of a baseline, we'll work on it when the engine's running. Bottom it out. One and a half turns, and I'll work on that while the engine's running. What else is in our box of goodies? Ugh. <laughs> Choke gum. Rod cover. I'll clean it up a bit more in a second. The gasket came off in one piece, so that's a, that's a bonus. And small bolt. I need a screw for the cover. So a lot of people make a mistake putting this spring in the bottom of the fuel tank and you can see how it happens. It's um, quite a neat fit. The thing is, it actually goes up here. So as the vacuum of the engine pulls the fuel uh, pump diaphragm up, the spring's there to push it back. So it acts as a, um, you know, the vacuum's on, vacuum's off, pumps it. Um, put it in there, it's not gonna pump very well. But it can be a little bit tricky to get your thing up the right way and screwed down. But we'll work on that. Where's our new diaphragm? I haven't done one of these in years, so let's just learn as we go. Did I order the right diaphragm is the next question. Mm. Yep. Our spring goes under the bottom here. What's the best way of doing this, folks? Put that on there first. We'll cut that choker off. That should hopefully hold our little bring him close while we flick him over. Now we just gotta sort of move that around and get it in place. fit all my screws fairly loosely. Whether it's a modern carburetor or one of these, which I haven't done in so long. Just so you can get that diaphragm nice and centered on all the bolt holes. to hold the choke flap open as you tighten these up. I don't know whether that puts like a bit of um, tension on the diaphragm or well, I think I saw that on David's farm video so it may not be correct. But we'll try it this way. We'll find out if we got it wrong.
two, three, four, five. Yeah. Our choke's a little bit sluggish to close. So we will put some lube in these end pieces here where the butterfly flows through. And just work it backwards and forwards. It's all a little bit sluggish. We'll just, we'll just bear with it and see what happens. I'm not going to sell this mower. Um, it can get stuck in the collection. And if I was to sell it, I may end up putting, I've got a couple of these ones, just your primer style carburetor on it. Not for the sake of they run any better. But it sort of makes them idiot proof for people and it does make them easier starting too. Uh, you've only got to sort of um, give a half ass pull when you've squirted fuel directly into it to get, a, get it to fire up. Whereas you try and draw fuel up when you're pulling those things over. So. actually shone a torch in behind this heat shield here it's quite clean so I'm not going to worry too much about getting rid of all this debris today anyway main point of today was to get it running nicely Got all three bolts started. I like to get all of them just sort of wound in a couple of turns before tightening them up. That's Field of housing. Mm. We'll put some oil in, then I'll come back tomorrow morning. We'll take it out the front. Hopefully, I found the airfield of housing by then and slapped it on and go for a spin. 
So of course the camera battery died last night um, as I was putting the oil in. So I've filled the oil up, I've put an air filter on. Now they're all, all there is to do is take it outside, put some fuel in and uh, see how we go. started way too easily. Um, all right, oh, what I suspect has happened is when I've lubed up the um, choke and stuff in the carburetor, I've sprayed some of the solvent down the intake there. Let's try a cold start. not a hundred percent happy ending um we've got fuel leaking between the carburetor and the tank and it's quite common to find that the carburetor has uh, warped and the new gaskets aren't as thick as the old ones either so we've got a leak there and that's causing problems with mixture it's a bit unfortunate and i do think Looks like we've got a bit of a crack in this joint in the fuel tank here. And I can't get the camera in there, but you can tell it's leaked around there as well. Anyway, a little bit of fun mucking around out here. Not every project ends up perfect, so I'll wait around until I find another one of those tanks. Or I'll put on a primer one just to use it in the meantime. But all in all, thanks for watching. All right. Let's see how it goes with this one on. We've got the shed door open. We'll just uh, quickly fire him up in here. Run.
better. Uh, we'll keep that other carb there, and when I get some time to muck around with it, the jobs will start to pile up. Um, we'll come back to it, but that's got a good usable mole for now.